it's closer. Half a year ago, we took Rouge the Bat on an interesting journey into Sonic Adventure 2. Normally, the game is divided up amongst different theme levels for all the characters. Speed characters take on fast racing stages, treasure hunters take on more exploratory stages, and mech-based characters take on shoot 'em up levels. But what if one character had to take on all these levels? That's exactly what we did with Rouge the Bat for the hero side of the story. Every single level is attempted with her along with all the boss fights. But now it's time to do a complete 180 because we have the complete dark storyline just waiting to be done, and one hero has stepped up to the challenge. In this video, we're going to take Knuckles and match him up with all the dark story levels in the game to see if he's capable of beating them. So fasten your seatbelts because we have a lot to cover. Is it possible to be Sonic Adventure 2's dark story while only playing as Knuckles? So Knuckles can glide, melee while running, climb walls, dive, and dig into a variety of surfaces. Unfortunately, not all these abilities are going to work though. Any level that isn't a treasure hunting level isn't designed to be digged within, so our character can't utilize that function for healing. The camera isn't going to behave nicely either, as we'll always aim towards a level when we are flying. This can get annoying if we need to break out of bounds because we won't be able to see where we are going. Certain doors, switches, and abilities that other characters would use to proceed through levels don't have behavior set for treasure hunting characters like Knuckles. Dynamites and other objects like door locks can't be destroyed with our fists. Generally, a lot of small things become pretty big issues. Just like in the last video, all this is possible given mods produced by Main Memory, whom has contributed a ton to the Sonic hacking community. Some of you may recognize that this character replacing functionality was also available through Action Replay, although the results weren't as stable. Given this character change, some levels will be easy to clear, and others will be very difficult. I also want to give a huge shout out to Axel Thunder for helping out with the video. They are an extremely talented speedrunner who is constantly pushing the limits of the game. And with that said, let's begin our challenge. First up, we have Iron Gate. This is Eggman's first level, and unfortunately is an interior-based level. For those who watched my Rouge video, shoot 'em up levels that are closed off are by far the worst ones in the game. And this one at first glance appears to be very similar. We drop down a big vertical tunnel, encounter some drones, and then face off against our first deal breaker. The doors within this level contain locks in them that normally need to be targeted in order to be destroyed. But Knuckles isn't capable of destroying these locks at all. We can't even throw Omochow at the door either, as a way to destroy them. This worked on certain doors with Rouge, but it isn't going to save us here. There's no easy way to click through the door either, and even if we did, another door will be waiting for us. Fortunately for us, there is a solution though. If we restart the stage and match the fly button, we can actually start gliding within the small corridor in the ceiling. If we fall out of this, it's super hard to get back inside, so we might as well restart. From within this tunnel though, we can climb to the top and jump out of bounds. At this point, we need to fill out the level path and stand out of bounds for pretty much the entire level. We can't go back inbounds at any point because we will hit those locked doors again as they are repeated throughout the stage. If we glide extend, which is a speedrunning technique that involves diving and immediately gliding again, we can fly super far without losing our momentum. As a quick recap, the longer you glide in the game, the slower you go and the faster you begin falling. By interrupting this with a dive and then reinitiating flight, we reset this process. By pulling this off, we can coast alongside out of bounds and fly directly to the goal ring. With this, our first stage is clear. Next up, we have B-3X Hotshot, which is our first boss battle with Knuckles. Hitting this guy is a bit annoying, as about the only ground-based move that can hit him is the increased vertical distance uppercut attack, and you usually take recoil damage. So basically, you want to hit him and then collect the rings every time. Directly flying into the cockpit works very well too for hitting him, if you can time it right. With a few hits, he'll go down, and Knuckles will proceed on his quest. Since Dry Lagoon is a treasure hunting stage, Knuckles won't have any problems with it at all. We'll be skipping it and all of the treasure hunting stages to save time, as nothing changes at all. Next up, we have Sand Ocean. Generally speaking, this level isn't too difficult. It's super wide and open, which is perfect for Knuckles. We can climb almost any object here too, which makes gliding to and fro pretty simple. The stone pillars that normally fall when Eggman shoots them are extremely helpful, because we can climb them high into the sky. Once we're way up here, we can glide from pole to pole throughout the level as we pretty much skip everything. The only big issue with this stage is the draw distance of the game. Because the level is so widespread, it can be hard to tell where you need to go next because the objects and terrain in the distance unloads unless you get near. So sometimes the next pillar and location won't be visible unless you take a gamble with gliding. 
if you do land at all, be warned not to use any launch pads. If you do, you'll shoot off like a cannon way out of bounds, with no way to recover. The first time this happened I was extremely confused, and I'm not entirely sure why it occurs, but if we play it safe and glide from pillar to pillar, we can locate the ending and clear the stage. I'm worried to Radical Highway, which is a level that ends up being more challenging than I would have thought. Generally speaking, we move gradually downwards to this entire stage, which works to our advantage. We're capable of scaling both walls and some of the buildings nearby too, which can give us an additional height boost when it comes to flying through the stage. We do want to generally stay up in the sky since there are some problem areas in the level which we'll talk about in a moment. As an interesting side note, loop-de-loops can be run upside down if you land on top of them since they are thin objects and their logic still applies. You'll die from doing it, but it's still neat. Towards the end of the level, we do run to a series of problems though. Within a tunnel, we come across a metal roller that we're supposed to roll underneath with Shadow, but Knuckles lacks this ability. We can't slide punch under it, nor can we climb over it. At this point, we have to backtrack before the tunnel and utilize the buildings outside to jump from building to building. We can then glide past the tunnel and land after it. But then we come across an even bigger issue. At the end of the stage is a double inverted highway section that your character normally runs through before clearing the stage. However, unless you're a speed-based character, you're going to run into issues. Knuckles cannot make it to the end of this, and he actually gets hung up within the loops. He'll get stuck running in place and then he'll fall. You can try to recover with a glide, but if you touch the track at all again, you get warped back to the start. Knuckles will magically appear running full speed at the beginning of the loops again, and it'll repeat over and over. This is because this is a scripted event. This isn't supposed to have any interruptions. For some reason, Knuckles can't run over all the geometry on the loops though, more than likely due to his ability to climb walls. So we need to backtrack all the way to those buildings we used before, and we need to glide extend out of bounds and direct ourselves towards the end of the stage. The height is good enough so we can make it to the goal ring by skipping past this double loop section, and we can then proceed to the next stage. Next up we have A Quarters, which is a Rouge stage. Knuckles can definitely clear it as the objectives are the same. With that, we proceed to Lost Colony. Lost Colony is an interesting level because we once again have to turn to the depths of space. The doors within this area are blocked by dynamite packs that we normally need to target to open the doors. Even with an Omo Chao, these cannot be destroyed. Without a way to destroy them, we can't move on. So immediately we find ourselves climbing the big wall at the start of the level. We will glide extend out of bounds to our right and head backwards quite a bit, passing by a lot of large vertical cylinders. Our goal is to make it to the huge elevator shaft that Eggman normally rides upwards. This is the farthest we can go out of bounds because the goal ring for the level is way above where we start for the level. Once we enter the elevator shaft, it takes about a minute to climb up. It might be wise to hit the checkpoint at the bottom too, so you don't have to do the out of bounds gliding at the start of the level again in case you die. At the top of this area, we come across a problem though, a sealed door we can't open. And beyond that, we have another sealed door past this one we need to get around to. So this is when I started trying to figure out if there are ways to clip out of bounds. The entire room itself is sealed and can't be used. I did notice that I could start a tumbling falling animation though, which made me focus on the platform beneath me. This tumbling animation started because the zone for it overlapped the edges of this room, since the next area was an exterior. I tried my best to clip through the platform and climb inside of it, but no matter what I did, I couldn't do it. That's when I decided to reach out to Axel Thunder, the speedrunner I had mentioned earlier. When I produced my Rouge the Bat video, there was one level that absolutely wrecked the run. Because of it, we couldn't clear the game, and that was Prison Lane. However, even though the level seemed impossible, Axel Thunder built upon the progress that I made and utilized some wall clipping mechanics I did not know existed. He actually cleared Prison Lane after the video came out, thus making it so the game was actually doable. Rouge the Bat could beat the hero story all by herself. Given this, I felt he was the right person to ask for help. And he basically answered my prayers. There was one small thing I overlooked in this room, and it was the right edge of the platform. I overlooked this because normally when you jump to it, Knuckles will grab the edge and pull himself up. But there's a very, very small window of opportunity where he will grab the side and hold on to it. Even though I was trying to clip out of bounds here earlier, I wasn't utilizing the right piece of geometry. When hanging on this edge, you can climb straight through the wall since the platform stretches past the wall itself. With this, you can jump off and to the right and glide extend around the next series of rooms and past the doors you can't open. We can then make it to the goal ring and move on to the next stage. Enter Weapons Bed. A level I don't have much to write about at all. Honestly, this level is so straightforward about anyone could do it with ease. Just fly from area to area and climb back up. You'll eventually hit the goal ring. We then battle a pacifist Rouge who goes down a few hits. It's a weird boss fight. Security Hall is up next, which is a Rouge stage. This is definitely clearable, so we head onwards to r-1-a Flying Dog, a Rouge boss. 
I always disliked fighting this boss, and battling it with Knuckles actually felt more difficult for some reason. I just felt like I had a lot of trouble hitting it. We can definitely defeat him and move on, but I just had a bad time fighting this boss. Onwards to White Jungle, another level where we are going to stick to the skies. We have to stay way above the level because Knuckles can't use any vines or slingshots inside the level. Touching them either softlocks or crashes the game completely. So we need to maximize our height and consider that we need to go long distances to compensate for the distance that the slingshots normally horizontally launch you. You can pretty much climb a good amount of the walls and trees here though, so your only hindrance is that the draw distance makes it hard to see where the next area you need to go is. We can certainly reach the goal ring at the end though, and move on. Next up, we battle against Sonic, who in this case is Rouge. A Rouge who doesn't do anything, so we just mercy kill her. It's really awkward. Now, this is one part of the game we sort of have to bypass. Route 280 is normally a level you play with Rouge in her car. In our Rouge Hero Run, this was doable because both Tails and Rouge drive in the main storyline. Knuckles doesn't though, and we can't actually load his car here. He has a car, but it just won't function right. I'm willing to rule this course out for the sake of the run, just because the level won't run though. I'll let you decide your thoughts on that in the comments. With that, we fall into Sky Rail, another level like Weapons Bed that I classify as really easy. It's wide open and a giant race going outwards and down. We can't grind on any of the rails at all since Knuckles isn't able to do so, but we don't need it either. We can simply follow the path of the rails from the sky. Doing so will take us to the goal ring with ease. It's now time for something completely unexpected. The Egg Golem Fight. Now when we took this on with Rouge, we had some problems, but generally it wasn't too terrible. We could defeat it and move on. But there's a big difference between the hero and dark fights though. The hero mode fight is technically a speed based character fight. Thus even with Rouge, we could still jump onto the control mechanism and damage the golem. With Knuckles though, we're actually in a gunner fight. We're supposed to constantly shoot the boss to defeat him. Obviously, we can't do that. Flying into the golem doesn't hurt him, nor does any melee attack. If we fall down below, we have to be careful not to fall into the quicksand. Not because it will kill us, but because it won't. We just fall through it continuously and never die. Which is worse than death, really. We can pause and restart the match, which does sacrifice our life, but doing so can trigger Omochao. Omochao is the only thing that can hurt the egg golem. But the issue is that Omochao is flying around like crazy, and you can't damage him fast enough to make him fall on stable ground. Typically, he flies into the egg golem, damaging the golem, but also crashing himself. He then plummets into the quicksand below and falls into the out of bounds void before disappearing for good. Even if he landed on a platform below, once he woke up, he would immediately fly away and vanish. And we can't get him back up top because we can't climb any walls here. We have to take the grab lifts back up, meaning we couldn't grab him even if he was there. The egg golem can only take damage on his upper half too, so this fight is a lost cause. Because the egg golem can be damaged though, it might be possible for someone to somehow beat this. It'd be absolutely insane though. I'm marking this down as non-clearable for the time being, our first major loss on this run. Next up we have Mad Space and the Knuckles vs Rouge fight, both of which are pretty much the same. Nothing changes. But then we come against the dreaded Cosmic Wall. <sighs> as if the A Golem didn't beat us down enough, Cosmic Wall completely obliterates us. Cosmic Wall is one of the only stages in the game that doesn't naturally descend. In fact, it constantly climbs upwards at a fast rate. Normally, when you're here with Eggman, there's low gravity and you can actually use your hover move to fly upwards to the next platforms. But not with Knuckles. In fact, the low gravity isn't even considered at all. Knuckles maintains his normal jumping height, which leaves us stranded at the start of the level. We can't jump to the first set of the platforms, but we can use Knuckles' spiral upper to get more vertical distance than our normal jump, allowing us to fudge our way onto the first platform. Going further from here is impossible though. The next jump is way too high, and we aren't capable of landing on the rotating objects up here. Since the level just keeps climbing up and up, we can't do anything. We're near the death barrier too, so everything just leads to our death. Even if the egg golem was beatable, there is absolutely no way to beat this stage at all. Speedrunner tech or not, this is a showstopper. But just for the heck of it, we'll close out the run. Just like in Rouge's quest, fighting the Tails vs Eggman battle, which is replaced with Knuckles and Rouge, is insanely hard. Rouge is super aggressive and has lots of health, and you have only one hit until you're dead. Once she's past half health, every time you hit her, she will stop time for 10 seconds. You have to be careful when you're attacking so you don't get stuck out in the open, otherwise you might die during the time freeze. 
She'll freeze time around five or six times once you get her past half health. You have to be extremely careful while doing this fight in order to proceed onward to Final Chase. In Final Chase, honestly, it's pretty easy. I wish I had more to say about it, but you can glide through the stage and then use the gravity cylinders to progress to the stage normally. That's it. Upon booting up the final fight between Shadow and Sonic, Rouge takes the stage once again as our final opponent. In this fight, you don't have the helming attack, so you pretty much have to wait until she uses her special attack and then jump in anticipation when it is in effect. Doing so will let you dodge the damage, and you can run up to her and give her a punch. You'll never catch her if you just chase her, so you pretty much have to keep stopping and letting her hit you. Don't lag too far behind though, because you'll fall to your death. She can fall to hers, but she'll just respawn. After a few blows, she'll go down and you're clear of the game. Or you would have if it weren't for that pesky cosmic wall and the meddling A golem. Knuckles can clear pretty much every other stage in battle except for those. In comparison between the two runs, Rouge's hero run is by far way more difficult. It's almost not even comparable honestly. If you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend doing so because every level seemed like a pretty difficult challenge. There is way more enclosed levels that you have to do really bizarre mechanics in order to proceed. The precision gets pretty nuts. For this Knuckles run, the levels were a lot easier. Mind you, we couldn't beat the game, but Rouge can now that Prison Lane has been cleared by Axel Thunder. And speaking of Axel Thunder, I recommend checking out some of their super cool runs on their channel. They were super willing to help out when I got stuck at Lost Colony. And I definitely would have been fumbling around there for a long time if it weren't for them. Beyond that, let me know what your thoughts are about this run in the comments below. Unfortunately, it is impossible for Knuckles to clear the dark story by himself, but it was sure a lot of fun giving it a whirl. And with that, thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers.